Here we're going to be looking at admission of a new partner into a partnership and we're going to be using the goodwill method. Now with the goodwill method here the total capital of the new partnership approximates the fair value of the partnership here. So let's go down and look at our example here. We have existing partners here A and B here and they have capital balances and their total capital balance here is $150,000 and then they have portioned out here their capital uh, up ratio here and also the profit ratio. Profit ratio here is 50-50 here. And we have this partner C which is going to invest $54,000 to acquire an interest in capital of 20% and an interest of profit of 20%. So going over here the new partner would have an interest in the capital here of 20% and the profit here at 20%. So let's go down and look at our calculations here. So the book value of the original partners here we had at $150,000 and then we have the investment of the new partner C here they're going to pay $54,000. So adding those together that gives us a total capital here of the partnership of $204,000. And then we're going to go here and we're going to calculate what the implied fair value of the partnership is here based on uh, this partner C's investment. So partner C invests $54,000 for a 20% interest here. So based on that you got the 54,000 divided by 20% gives $270,000 as the fair value of this partnership. So going up here to our diagram here we got a total fair implied fair value of 270,000 here and we have total capital here invested of $204,000. So we have a difference here. So uh, let's go and look at how what that difference could mean to us here. So we got $270,000 implied fair value less the $204,000 total capital. So that gives us a difference here of $66,000 here. And that could be one of two things. Either there is goodwill involved in this uh, partner C entering the partnership or, there in, or there's some unrecorded appreciation for this partner C entering the partnership here. And in either case here this $66,000 dollars that must be added to the existing book value or in case of goodwill it has to be allocated to the original partners here. So let's go down here and uh, look at one more alternative here for calculating that uh, goodwill or that unrealized appreciation. So taking the book value of the new partnership here. So we got 20% here of the total book value that the new partner would be getting. That's 204,000 times 20%. That gives $40,800 book value to the new partner here. But they paid $54,000. So taking the difference here to $54,000 paid less the $40,800 here in book value that they would have been allocated gives us a difference here of $13,200. That's what they had paid extra here. So taking the $13,200, which it represents 20% here of the new partner's uh, capital amount here. So you divide that here into 13, 20% into $13,200 and you get $66,000 here as goodwill here. That would be, or in this case, goodwill or um, unrecorded appreciation of some asset here. That was the total difference. So let's go back here and look at our diagram here once again. So this in total implied fair value here of $270,000. Well, uh, when we're using the goodwill method, the total capital of the new partnership must be approximate this fair value. So the total capital of the new partnership here is $204,000, but it must approximate, it must be equal to $270,000 here using the goodwill method. So we have two ways of handling, handling that. So we can look at case one here, which is identifiable assets here. So if the difference between the fair value and the book value here of the recorded assets are identifiable, identifiable, then adjustments to the asset balance should be considered here. And then we have case two that we can look at. Now that's traceable goodwill here. So assuming there's no difference between the book value and the fair value of the assets, the new partner's willingness to pay more indicates that their goodwill existed prior to the new partner's, partner's admission. So the goodwill is recorded and allocated to the original partners per their profit and loss ratio. So we're going to look at both ways here, looking at case one, the identifiable assets, and case two here, the traceable goodwill and how we'd record those. 
Okay, now we're going to look at how we'd handle this goodwill or this unrecognized appreciation here of $66,000. So when using the goodwill method, we have to bring this total capital amount here of $244,000 up to $270,000, the implied fair value here of the partnership. So let's look at case one here where we have identifiable assets. And for our example here, we're going to have a land depreciation of $86,000. And then we get inventory write down or a reduction of inventory here of $20,000. So the net appreciation or increase we have is $66,000, which re uh, represents the $66,000 increase here from the total capital to the implied fair value here. So let's look at how we'd record this for Partner C's investment here. So assets from Partner C, that would be the amount they invested here. That would get debited for $54,000. And then the increase in the appreciation of land would get debited here, increased for $86,000. And then inventory, that would get credited or reduced here by $20,000. And then uh, A's cap or Partner A's capital would be increased or debited here for $33,000. B's capital would be debited for $33,000. And then C's capital account here would be debited for $54,000, the amount that they invested in the partnership. So let's look at this $33,000 here that was allocated for A and B. And that amounts to the net appreciation here of $66,000. So how we allocate that is based on the previous, on the partner's previous or their older uh, old profit and loss ratios. In this case, that was before the, uh, the new partner C entered the partnership and their profit loss ratio here was 50% to A and 50% to B here. Partner A got 50%, partner B got 50%. So here's that $66,000 net appreciation here. So 50% of that would go to A for 33,000 and then B would get 50% here for 33,000. So that calculates here the capital that would be credited to both A and B, split 50-50 here between each of them. Now let's go look at case two here where we have traceable goodwill here. And again, we're dealing with this uh, $66,000 amount here. So partner C, looking at their investment here, uh, how we'd record that. Assets from C, again, would be debited here for $54,000, the amount they invested. And then goodwill in this case would get debited here for $66,000 or increased. And then the capital Capital A's account would be credited here for 33,000. Capital or for partner B, their capital account would get debited here for 33,000, and partner C would get debited here for 54,000 dollars. The investment they made here. Now the 33,000 dollar amount for each partner A and partner B here, that was as we calculated using their old profit ratios here, splitting the 66,000 um, dollar goodwill that was allocated here between the two. And then we want to note here for partner C, their capital account, that would be the original capital of $150,000 plus their investment here, $54,000 plus the goodwill here of $66,000 gives a total amount here of $270,000. And partner C's interest would be 20% of that. That gives them a, a partner C's capital balance here of $54,000. Okay, to summarize here, when using the goodwill method here, we've taken the total capital amount here of $204,000. Now that was based on the book value here of $150,000 from the original partners plus the $54,000 investment by partner C here. So this is sitting at its book value here. And what you we've done here with the goodwill method, we have adjusted it up to the fair value of those um, of the partnership's capital accounts. Whatever had to be adjusted here for up to its fair value. So we've taken the book value here and adjusted it up to its fair value. And we either did that in this example through identifiable assets or some traceable goodwill here. But nonetheless, just remember here, when you're working with the goodwill method, you take the book value here of your total capital and you adjust it up to its fair value.